welcome to Tough Blood Boxing. I am locked in, and let's get ready to talk about it! What's good, everybody? I'm locked in. Welcome to another episode of Tough Glove Boxing. First of all, as always, I want to take this time to give a salute to all the tough girls and tough guys that apply pressure to that like button for your boy. I truly appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, I welcome you to hit the subscribe button, become part of the Tough Glove family. We're a small family, but we're a strong family. And you don't have to agree with everything I say. All you got to do is do what I do and love the sport of boxing now. So, man, Victor Conte finds his way back into relativity. Yet again, right? He uh, threw a post up on his Twitter account, right? And I want to talk about it a little bit because I have a question, man. Um, it like just recently came to my attention because I had not even ever thought to question as to whether this was the case or not. But if I'm not mistaken, I was watching a WCS, right? A live he did earlier. And... He brought it to my attention that Edward Spence hasn't been registered for drug testing since, what, was it June 19th of 2019 or July of 2019, June or July of 2019. And I thought that was like absolutely crazy. So now don't get me twisted, all right? I'm not saying Edward Spence is a cheater, all right? I have no evidence that he has uh, ever fought dirty okay but I have to say right like how do we know how would we know right are we right to just assume that you know what I'm saying I mean we gave Canelo that smoke about you know PEDs and everything like that and we do know Evel Spence has trouble making 147 Pounds, you know, he's had to do fat camp for a few fights. It's not far-fetched thought, especially based off of like what just happened with Weeks and Rolly Romero. Like, I don't put it past the PBC to be underhanded enough to let something like that go on. And that's actually pretty shocking because if it's true that Floyd Mayweather and Al Heyman are basically equal partners, right? Even Floyd put the Manny Pacquiao fight off for like five years because he didn't want to fight without there being testing. And Manny Pacquiao had a problem with the testing. So just from that perspective alone, I would think that that was an automatic thing. But anyway, let's go over the tweet that got people talking. Now, there was a tweet about a month ago. I'm not going to go back to March, rather. Right? We're going to start with the one that he posted on May 15th. And it says, hi. At Evan Spence Jr., please check your DM and respond to the Bada 24-7 365 sponsorship offer made of 100% of the annual fee. At Terrence Crawford has agreed to accept and participate if you are also willing. Please let me know either way. Much respect, both of you. Thank you in advance. So he's going to sponsor Evan Spence and Terrence Crawford uh, for their body testing for the fight, right? And right away, you see the, the, the fanboys come out talking about what a dirty old man Victor Conte is and uh, crime you got caused committing this hate. This man really has no shame. So yeah, the, the spin sets are going off on him, right? But then there was an even more updated post, I guess. Twitter started going crazy, so he had to kind of respond to that. And he goes, this is the last one that he put out just 56 minutes ago. It says, nonsense. This is from Victor Contents. Nonsense is being spewed. I respect Evan Spence Jr. He posted about the need for 24-7, 365 testing and boxing, including a hair test. I responded with at batter testing 24-7-365 info. Evel responded by DM. I explained by DM. I have offered to sponsor him and Terrence Crawford. The offer stands. Right? So, let's break that down. 
Now, I think I would call a little cap on something though, right? He said, nonsense is being spewed. He has respect for Evel Spence Jr. But he's saying that he was just responding to a post that Evel Spence made about 24-7-365 testing, right? Including a hair test. So my question is, why didn't you just DM him that information? I mean, you, you know, you know, everybody can see Twitter, right? So immediately we see that and we see you telling him to check his DMs, right? It makes us think that Evan Spence is holding up the fight because he don't want to do the drug testing. Now, am I reaching? Possibly, right? But it could be perceived that way when you put it on Twitter like that, right? And then the furthermore, if you was just really responding to him, why would you put Terrence Crawford has agreed to accept and participate if you are also willing? What does Terrence Crawford have to do with anything if you were responding to Errol Spence? So that's what I would say to Victor Conte. But on the other hand, what it does tell me is that the Evel Spence Jr. and Terrence Crawford fight talks are really serious. They're in a serious stage now. We can at least take that they are really negotiating the process, right? Because once you get to the drug testing and if he is, is sending, if he's, if he's saying things like sending an invite to Evel Spence, right? To join Bada and saying Terrence has also agreed to do it if you are, why else would that need to be associated with each other unless the fight was in serious talks, right? And so I'm guessing that at this part, this point of the negotiations, we're past the money. And we're just talking about things like drug testing and whatever other amenities, you know, that, that come upon, you know, between two star fighters, what they have to choose from, or the A side, B side, whatever. Right? But, um, yeah, but the thing is, apparently, Abu Spence still, it says he responded by DM. He explained to Abu Spence by DM, but the offer stands. So if Terrence has already agreed to do it, if Abu Spence is doing it, and you saying that you spoke to him via DM and explained it to him, did you not get an answer as to whether or not? he was going to agree to do Vada testing because you put at the end the offer stands. So I can see why everybody's buzzing around about these tweets, right? What does that tell us? That tell us that the fight is in serious stages so it really is on the brink of happening, right? But how could, you know, that is a good question, especially given what happened with Orlando Romero and Weeks and how that fight was just a, a plain robbery in plain sight, right? Do we just go ahead and put it past Evan Spence and his team and the PPC to, to, to say that just on their moral standards that they will come into the fight clean? without any policing of that. Like, I would think that that needs to be in place, 100% drug testing for both athletes. But I'm shocked that uh, he hasn't been enrolled since 2019 because that means he would have had to have fought, who was it, Sean Porter, Danny Garcia, or maybe did he have the Sean Porter fight already? He possibly may have had the Sean Porter fight already, but for... Uh, Danny Garcia for Ugas, there was no drug testing. Right? And we know how undisciplined he is outside of boxing. See, now things are starting to make sense. Y'all remember after he beat Ugas, right? Excuse me if y'all can hear the thunder as you're raining outside. I actually love the sound of the rain. But I remember after that August fight, Derek James leaned over and whispered in his ear, we have to stay focused, okay? We have to get back to the gym, right? And given statements that Evan Spence has made about his own discipline and how he would take a certain amount of days off and everything like that, that actually makes sense to me now because I thought he was just saying, okay, you know, 
Well, I thought he was saying, you know, stay disciplined. You know, we got to stay focused, stay on an assignment to be to be undisputed. When I thought the fight with him and Bud was gonna happen last year, but that was Derek James in his air saying, "Listen, this ain't the time to party." Yeah, no, you're not gonna do like you did before and take a whole month off and and, and not train or anything like that. We need to stay in shape, so you got to get back into the gym. That was Derek James addressing that issue immediately after the Ugas fight because he knew Errol Spence was in a mind state of it's time to go party. Right? So that makes sense now. And another thing that started to make sense to me is a tweet that Terrence Crawford made last year saying, I heard about that shit you was doing. Get your shit together and blah, blah, blah. Y'all remember what I'm talking about. Maybe he heard that he was using some shit and trying to cycle off of it. Or maybe he just was uh, didn't take Deborah James' advice and he was just partying. You know what I'm saying? After the Ugas fight. So what do you think Thomas Crawford meant by that? You see, if you wait long enough, things will start to fall into place and, and things that didn't really 100% add up before. But it says here, the offer still stands, so that means that Spence still has not agreed to take Victor Conte's sponsorship of the VADA testing. Now, as of this video, things could have changed, right? Because, like I said, Victor Conte put this out 56 minutes ago, and I understand he had to address a bunch of the trolls that went there. He's an older guy. He don't know how the internet really work like that. You know what I'm saying? But, Yeah. Is is the uh, the PBC is Eru Spence in them? Are they above scrutiny? Is my question. Because if this fight doesn't happen, if I was Terrence Crawford, I don't care if the money was right and everything else was right. I wouldn't accept the fight unless there was drug testing. That's how important this fight is. And to be honest with you, any real Spence fan should have no issue with that at all and again I'm not saying that Spencer's ever fought dirty I don't know I'm just saying that if there's been no drug testing how would we know he left room for reasonable doubt right he did that if it's true that he hasn't been in drug testing if it's true right because I still don't know 100% for sure. There's no way I would be able to know, but I know what I hear going around. So I'm going to say allegedly, but I'm going to go ahead and assume that he's been doing the right thing and to why I have hard evidence that he has not been doing the other, you know, other things, despite some pictures that may be looking funny out there. You know, again, go check out that uh, latest live from WCS. You know what I'm saying? I'll actually link that down in the description below. If you guys want to check it out, he was cooking pretty much the whole video and, and made some very valid points. And it made me want to know, you know, uh, are we allowed, to, are, are the Spence fans allowed to question the PBC? And are they going to hold every Spence accountable with that same energy they held for Canelo and every other fighter that popped dirty? Are they going to hold him to that same standard of drug testing? Because... I didn't hear any of them make any content about the, the Conte's tweets at all. But anyway, I'm not going to drag this out. You know what it is. You heard the tweets. Get in the comment section. Not your feelings. Let me know what you think. Locked in. Tough Club of Boxing. I appreciate your time checking out the content. I'm out. You ain't got to go home, but you got to get the hell up out of here.